Hello and welcome to this Taking Time with Tasha, where today I'm going to be starting on a new project, following on from my Game of Thrones bird sigil project. I wanted to keep the momentum that I had from that project going, um, and I'd really enjoyed the amount of stitching that I had been doing. And I've wanted to work on my gold work skills for some time, so this project sort of was ticking a lot of boxes, or at least the plan was, as some time ago I bought a big pack of like gold work scrap items um, that I thought, oh I'll do something with those when I know a bit more about gold work. And now I do know a little bit more about gold work, but I just haven't really put that much of it into practice. So that's what this project is really all about. I'd like to use up some of the materials that I have already in the house, which works out pretty well considering that we've obviously in the UK just gone back into another lockdown and I'd like to use up what I have. It would be great if I didn't need to order in new things or really wait. I always think that getting out of a creative rut is something that every creative person comes up against and I've had my fair share of them. So whilst I get going on this project, I'd also like to share a few of my tips on how to overcome creative ruts when you experience them and the things that I try and do to help myself along the way. I might also take this opportunity to just point out that this isn't an instructional video. It really is just more following my progress with this very rough plan of the project. Um, and so if you want to learn about gold work to do it in a more instructional manner for yourself, do check out the London Embroidery School who have a few really great gold work classes that will help you a lot more. So I decided to start on this first leaf and I have a really super rough plan for this project as I mentioned. I'm not entirely sure where it's going to go or exactly what it's going to look like in the end. but. The plan is to do each leaf in a gold work style, in kind of inverted commas. Some of them will be traditional styles, some of them will probably just be gold coloured things that I've seen and want to try, and some will be things that I've thought about but haven't actually put into practice. So this is really just an opportunity to try some stuff out without any real pressure of what it should look like at the end. I'll probably more be trying to evaluate how each leaf looks individually more than how the piece looks as a whole piece overall. This project really is just for the enjoyment of it. Um, often I find myself putting quite a lot of pressure on, on projects to be a certain way, to be perfect if you like, um, and that often leaves me feeling a little bit disappointed so I'm actively trying not to do that with this one. and. That very succinctly brings me to my first point with getting out of a creative rut, is just do something. Stop overthinking it. Some of these materials that I'm going to be using for this project are not exactly the right material for the technique that I'm going to try. I already know that, but part of the point is to use up what I've got, and I could order new things in, but I think that that would then fall into the overthinking category. The point is just to do and to enjoy the stitching or whatever creative outcome it is for the doing's sake. So that's exactly what I'm going to try and do here. This first leaf is just about couching and so couching is where you use a different thread to secure the gold thread that's laying on the surface. It doesn't specifically have to be gold threads, you can couch any kind of thread you like, but it works particularly well with the gold threads because they are too delicate to pass through the fabric loads of times without getting super damaged. And on some of my pieces, you'll be able to see that there is some damage to the gold work threads um, because I mentioned they are from a scrap bag and I was probably a bit rough when I started detangling them, they were in a real mess. So yeah, there is a bit of damage there, but that's just going to be part of this piece's story, really. Um, I've so I've decided to, on the whole, keep them in there, unless it's really awful. But I don't want to make myself any more plunging ends than I 
absolutely need to have. Um, as you can see, I've got quite a lot already. So I think they will keep me more than busy enough. Keeping the centre break in this leaf, I'm hoping is going to give it a little bit more definition. Um, that check is very wavy and with its texture I don't want it to lose all its leafiness. So hopefully the combination of the centre vein and a smooth outside leaf shape from the passing should uh, keep as much detail as I'm hoping to in this piece. I've been using the lasso method to plunge my gold ends using this red thread, which is a buttonhole thread, so it's nice and thick and steady and I can just keep reusing the same piece of thread over and over until it's basically ready to fall apart. The passing thread is definitely much easier to plunge than the check uh, because of the check's wave and it kind of has that bit more grip to it and um, puts up a bit more resistance as it goes through the fabric but not as tricky as it could have been at least. You may or may not have noticed at the start of this video that I mounted this fabric onto calico because I knew that I'd be couching and you need that extra support for the fabric of another fabric behind it and it's being pasted on for the plunging specifically because it does obviously put a lot of pressure on the fabric when you do that. Once you have plunged then there's the added thing that you need to organize all of the gold threads that you got rid of on the top on the back of the fabric. It looks like the problem's gone away but it really hasn't so I'm gonna get busy with a curved needle here and get all of these tidied away into little families that are held flat-ish on the back. For my next leaf, I decided to kind of take it back a step. The thing that I really like about couch threads is the patterns that form within the design. So it really is just laying straight threads, but there are these sort of patterns that start to emerge and that's what I really wanted to explore with this. Those get a little bit more lost, which I did anticipate with the check of the first leaf. So I thought I would just go back and use just passing for the fill of this one so that I can really play with that a bit more. And for some contrast as well to the first one, I thought for this one, I would treat it as a whole shape and work on it all at once rather than breaking it in the center. Because I've decided to go for a pretty simple fill, I have given this one a pearl pearl edge, just because who doesn't love pearl pearl edge? Technically that is also couched, but uh, that's not really the focus of this particular video, so I'm not going to get too bogged down into that. But uh, I've started with the pearl pearl edge, so I've got a nice defined edge to start with, and then I'm just going to go ahead and fill that with the passing threads in the same way as before, working from the outside in but this time working the whole shape so it's kind of like one big concentric leaf. In just using the passing thread there are definitely less places to hide with this one and any kind of technical weaknesses that I show I feel are really obvious. Um, also you can see the damage to the passing thread a bit more on this one because there's nothing really to distract from it um, which then brings me to my second point, which is it doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to exist. If you get too caught up with trying to make your next piece perfect, it can be such a big boulder to get out of the way and it can be a real stopping point to beginning in the first place. Often when you want something to be perfect and if you consider yourself to be a bit of a perfectionist it can end up seeming almost like you feel like you're being lazy because you're not getting things done and it's kind of because you can't get over this mental block of wanting it to be perfect and therefore not starting until you think you're good enough but you won't get there at all if you don't begin and so it doesn't need to be perfect I don't think anything that one creates is ever really perfect. I think it's almost impossible for a creator to get to the end of a project and look at it and go, 
that is exactly how I envisage it to be. I would change nothing if I was to do it again. I would do it all exactly the same. I mean, I, maybe there are some people out, out there like that, but that's simply not my experience of it or how I've experienced other people going through the creative processes. So just begin, which then loops back into point one, stop overthinking. And in fact, point three, which is you're never going to stop learning and developing. Every new project you start is an opportunity to learn something new. And every time you start something new, you start with the experience of the last project now that you finished. So even if you're trying something that you've done before, this time you're doing it with the experience of having done it the first time. And so it's really not going to be perfect because you're still learning and you're always going to still be learning. So perhaps nothing will ever be perfect, but that's almost a good thing. That's what we're trying to apply to this next leaf that I'm working on. So I wanted to play around with the patterns within the couch threads a bit more. So I've gone back to a check this time, but it's a less tight check. The waved pattern is a lot more loose. And I've decided to split the leaf on the diagonal, so nowhere that it's naturally found within the pattern. But I do find that I've seen other people do this sort of thing and it does create some really interesting patterns within the shape, which is what I'm looking for. So hopefully as that will be exaggerated by the diagonal split and the little bit of wave in the check, it should make for quite an interesting looking leaf. From the second leaf, I do rather like a pearl pearl edge and so decided to do that again on this leaf. But uh, with the purpose of this being to try as many different things as possible, I thought this time I would try overstretching the Pearl Pearl and giving it a coloured core. I don't want to stray too far away from the gold theme that I've got going on already, as I don't really intend on actively using any colour in this particular piece. So as much as I'm giving it a coloured core, I've gone for just a slightly warmer sort of orangey gold that hopefully should look a little bit dark within the Pearl Pearl, but you won't be able to see that much of it. And that should hopefully keep it quite in line with the other design aspects that I've got going on and the ones that are still to come that I haven't yet thought of. So the first thing to do would be to overstretch the Pearl Pearl. Last time I used quite a thick Pearl Pearl I've decided to go for a bit of a more delicate one this time, um, which its diameter is more similar to that of the check that I used, so it's not going to be as prominent an edge as it was on the second leaf. And hopefully that will give me a little bit of a sharper finishing point and turning point or corner in the leaf, um, as those were probably the aspects that I feel are the weakest from the second leaf I did. I also realised that I went onto autopilot and because I've done some chipping before, if you've seen my gold wet letters um, N video, I automatically did the order of the gold work in the same way as I did with that, which is that I put the pearl pearl edge down first and then I filled it with the passing thread, but I now realise that the order is kind of one of the cruxes of gold work, the order that you work each element in. And perhaps the pearl pearl should have been done after the passing thread in this instance. It made sense for the chipping because the chipping just fills all the holes within the pearl pearl. But, and that's in the context of the letter, but for this, I think it's supposed to be the other way around. So I'm gonna try that this time. Um, and see if that's any easier or harder, if it gives me a better finish. Who knows? A little bit of time has passed and as you can see I've been working on this project for a little while now, quite a few hours, and I have bounced around and tried a few different techniques along the way. But I wanted to go back to the passing thread and try a little bit more of a challenge this time. So I'm trying to do a basket weave. As you can see with the bit of blue that's already um, on the piece, I have set myself the string bump base that I needed. 
as per the rest of this design. It's not entirely the right sort of string to be using as string bump. It's not traditional um, gold work string bump, but I just had some thick cotton that I thought I would use so that I could just get going. And so that's what I've done. Equally, blue is not exactly the right choice of color. It probably should have been white or cream or yellow, but alas, this is what we had. And so this is what we're going for. The basket weave I've been really excited about working towards because I love seeing those patterns reveal themselves as you start to build up the layers and I think that's something that's really lovely about basket weave is that it can look really satisfying and look really professional quite quickly hopefully. That's the plan at least. But there is going to be a lot of plunging with this one uh, because every end will need plunging both sides. So. Um, I'm going to need to leave myself a good amount of time to do that at the end, I think. As soon as I began this one, I realised there were loads of things that I should have done better. Um, I definitely should have been more careful with the positioning of my bumps so that uh, they were more perfectly even, which would have been easier for me to then create a really even basket weave on top. Um, my stitching itself I think has got a lot better with the sort of bricking effect that you do get with basket weave but generally bricking my stitches in general and I quite like that you need to be a little bit firmer with the passing thread with this one because you kind of want it to bend round your stitches and get those clean breaks when it is going down to the base and so that it has that difference from when it's traveling over the bump and you get the highs and the lows that you are looking for with basket weave. Because of my choice of blue bump as well, it meant that the edges are quite obvious and so um, in the end I did decide that it would be best to put an edge on it to try and cover those up. In the examples that I've seen of basket weave that I could find, they do usually have an edge which I assume is always to cover the end of the string pad. but. Um, I decided to do that also in passing thread because I didn't want to overcomplicate things anymore. There's already quite a lot going on. I did lose the shape of my leaf quite quickly. Um, that is because I got so caught up with looking at creating the pattern that I forgot to be really paying good attention to the overall shape. So that's definitely something I think I need to do better next time. And my leaf does look quite even but to the point of being quite symmetrical and therefore unnatural and not a very good representation of the shape of the leaf that I started out with. Unfortunately, that only got worse when it came to the plunging part of the design as I didn't really leave enough space for that. So this particular leaf is quite a lot bigger than the other leaves, as well as being an entirely different shape as well. That was also an oversight on my part. So plenty to work on with this one, but it has been good fun. Which does find me almost forgetting my fourth point, which is if you begin, your brain will fill in the rest. Sometimes a bit of creative confidence goes an awful long way. And if you just can get to starting, then you will eventually finish. It might end up being a little bit like my bird project where it takes you years to come back to it, but eventually you will finish and there'll be even more of a sense of achievement for the struggle. The idea for the last leaf of this video came to me while I was working on the basket weave leaf and it was that basket weave is supposed to look like it's woven, right? So why don't I just make a woven leaf? I'm not saying that by any means this isn't necessarily an original idea and that I'm the very first person to do it, but it wasn't in any of my books and I haven't seen any specific examples of this so I thought I'd just kind of make it up and see what happened if I was going to try and make an actual woven leaf and I knew I'd have to start by putting in the warp and then weave in the weft and it would probably need a little bit of padding if it was going to sit nicely so I decided to start with one layer of felt padding underneath just to give it some body and then it's got something to curve around. 
the fact that it wasn't in any of my books and it's not described on how to do this probably means that it's not a very good idea but I couldn't exactly see why not to do it and I thought well it'll be an experiment all the same might as well give it a go I've chosen to use um, the wavy check that I've got, the slightly stronger one, because I feel like if I put these two together as a weave, it should interlock quite nicely and hopefully will give me quite a tidy pattern because each of the warp and weft should fit into the other one's wave, so it should have an actual position to sit in rather than trying to create an orderly weave on say a passing thread which would be smoother um, but it's not going to be super super tight because it's not like woven on a loom I'm expecting there to be a little bit of space between the weave um, which is hopefully going to be part of its charm so those waves giving actual positions for the opposite warp or weft to sit into seems like it's going to be a good thing we will surely find out so I'm going to first put in a set of warp check lines and I'm just going to secure them at the bottom at this point I think and then I'll work on weaving the weft through it. On second thoughts if I don't have any control at the top of the warp threads then I don't think I'm going to be able to successfully weave the weft through just because it's going to be like moving around all over the place. I really won't have a hope and it'll also take ages. So I think if I just secure the top of the warp as well, just with one stitch so it can slip out a bit and then I can get some ease to slip the weft in underneath and over as I need to to create that weave with the second layer. slight rethink again. I knew this was going to be an experiment and because I didn't have any kind of text to check the techniques against um, it was going to be a little bit of a make it up as you go along but uh, trying to do this with the check is really hard and I think I'm just going to damage the work I've already done because the texture is just fighting against the existing warp layer. So I'm going to switch to passing thread for the weft, which is a, probably a bit of a strange choice, but just, just go with me on this one. We'll see how it goes. And at least that can slide in and it's a little bit smaller circumference wise than the check. So hopefully they'll fit together a bit better. It's probably going to result in a bit of a gappier leaf than I'd hoped for. I knew we were still probably going to be able to see the dark pad underneath with the woven leaf but this will probably be more obvious still. Anyway, never mind, perhaps this would be a good moment to talk about my last point, point five. If you're really stuck and in doubt, cheat. Now I know that's probably not where you thought this was going and I don't mean cheat like steal somebody else's work, not okay with that. But this whole project for me is a bit of a cheat. I can obviously design things from scratch and go through and actually like draw it out and all that sort of thing but sometimes that feels like too much of a task in itself and so using this patterned fabric is a bit of a cheat. I've just got this ground here that's already got some very simple shapes laid out for me to try a whole host of different techniques on and so far it's been working. Each time I have an idea about a new technique I want to try. I've got a pre-arranged design ready to go and I can just start to work on the stitching bit and focus on what I'm trying to achieve with that technique or making up that style, whatever it is, it's already there and ready to go. And obviously some of them come out well, some of them not so well, some of them are quite fitting to the original leaf shape, some barely resemble a leaf at all anymore. But it got me started. And that is the point really, is the getting going is often the hardest bit. So sometimes you just need to do what you need to do to get going. And then you can start to allow some of the other stuff to come into place, like your brain filling in the small details that you haven't worked out yet. This has ended up being a somewhat longer video than I intended, but I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. And as you can see, there are plenty more leaf videos to come, so I look forward to seeing you next time.